David here with Figboot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, today I'm going to be breaking one of my unwritten rules for my channel. Uh, typically I try not to review pens which are no longer on the market or unobtainable through normal channels. Uh, but with today being May 4th, Star Wars Day, I felt it was appropriate to review a Star Wars pen in my personal collection. Um, I haven't previously reviewed this pen and that is the Cross Peerless 125 Darth Vader. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Peerless 125. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. I've said this several times, but I feel the Cross Peerless 125 is a very underrated pen for a number of reasons that I'll get into here. Cross is a well-known company, but it's mainly known as a gift pen company. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you're someone who knows nothing about pens and want to give someone a pen as a gift, the first name you're probably thinking of is Mont Blanc. Uh, then you check out the prices of a Mont Blanc pen and decide to see what other options are out there. So you search for companies that you're most familiar with, mainly like Cross and Parker. For the most part, Cross isn't thought of much by fountain pen enthusiasts. I would say mainly because, you know, by their own decisions, uh, it's kind of lost exclusivity because they're so ubiquitous with department stores and catalogs uh, and something that's given away as uh, inexpensive corporate gifts. Uh, it's thought of as more of a gift than a writing instrument. Um, I've reviewed a few cross pens in the past, and by far my favorite has been the Peerless 125. And as I mentioned previously, it's the one I'll be showing you today, and it is the Darth Vader. Uh, for a number of years, Cross has had a licensing agreement with the Star Wars brand to market themed fountain pens. I've previously reviewed the Chewbacca, which is basically one of their Townsend models. Uh, maybe a year or so ago, the Star Wars license was not renewed, so they halted production of these themed pens. Uh, for the Darth Vader model, this is what the box looks like. Uh, inside, we have a couple of things. First off, there's a smaller box. Uh, there is a little, let's set this aside, um, a little Star Wars uh, pen stand. It says cross on the other side as well. I don't find myself using pen stands that much, but as themed extras for a pen goes, this is a nice little addition. It pairs nicely with the pen. Then we have another box, and inside we have a few things. There is uh, a little use and care guide with some information about cross and a certificate of authenticity. Um, there are a couple of cross proprietary cartridges. Uh, and then there's a little of information here uh, about the Star Wars line. I thought it was interesting that at the bottom for this Darth Vader model, they correctly welcome you to the Galactic Empire. Uh, but then at the end, they say, may the force be with you, which is from my understanding, something that only a Jedi or something from the Rebel Alliance would say. A Sith would say something like, may the dark side be with you or something along those lines. And then here we have the pen. This is the Cross Peerless 125 Darth Vader. Uh, I'll get into the details here in a minute, but many themed pens, in my opinion, uh, are a bit forced. Uh, no Star Wars pun intended. Um, I don't get that feeling with this pen here. There's a lot of things that they get right. Um, you know, I'm old enough to remember vividly going to see Star Wars in the theater for the first time. Uh, I was right at the target age for that movie. Uh, it was a very unique experience. You had to plan ahead to go to the film. You had to stand in line for a couple of hours. Uh, and this was in the day prior to multiplexes that you have now. So a theater would just have one screen and maybe a thousand seats, a much different experience. I remember sitting there, not really sure what I was about to see. I just knew that it was very popular. The lights went down and, uh, and then seeing the crawl and not really understanding what any of it meant. Uh, and then from the back of the theater, you could hear this rumbling moving its way down the side of the walls. Um, I can remember being blown away that you could actually hear the galactic destroyer making its way toward the screen before you actually saw it. And when Darth Vader made his entrance, you instantly knew that he was the villain of the story. Uh, okay, enough Star Wars talk. Let's actually take a look at this pen. Uh, it is made from metal. The cap is a bit on the thick side. Uh, but then it thins out on the barrel here. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. 
On the end, it is adorned with a red Savorsky crystal, symbolizing Darth Vader's iconic red lightsaber. Without going into a deep, complicated backstory, inside each lightsaber is what is called a kyber crystal, which has a life of its own. Typically, it can only be owned and wielded by a Jedi. A Sith would only be able to obtain a crystal by stealing it or taking it in battle. Then by using the dark side of the Force, they would fill the crystal with hate and rage and fear, essentially making it bleed, which is why Darth Vader's is red. Uh, around the rim, it is engraved with limited edition as well as the number of this pen. This is a limited edition of 1977 pens, the 1977 being the year Star Wars The New Hope was released. Uh, and then we have the cap and clip. Uh, it's a bit tough to see, but the face of the cap uh, has Darth Vader's helmet. The reflective black surface makes it tough to make out, but it's there. Uh, on the clip, it is stamped with the company name, Cross, and the lower portion of the clip symbolizes the grill on the front of his helmet. On the back side of the cap, there is the Imperial Crest, the six-spoked symbol of Palpatine's Galactic Empire, and then below that, it says Star Wars. Um, after the cigar tip, the cap is straight, uh, and at the end, there's no traditional cap band, which I felt was good for this pen. It would have kind of taken away from the overall aesthetics of the theme. There is a rather large rounded step down to the barrel, which begins with a pseudo band of text where it says Peerless 125. Uh, below that, the barrel contains the electronics found on the chest plate of Vader's armor. Uh, his armor was designed to maintain and protect his charred body. Uh, it was basically a, a completely sealed life support system, hence the need for electronics. Uh, one of my few beefs with this pen is that the cap has a single thread, and when capped, the electronics really aren't aligned with the helmet on the cap. The main panel should kind of basically be aligned like this in the center. Uh, and even when you are taking a look at it without the cap, it's just slightly off center in relation to the nib. Maybe only three degrees, but enough to make me notice. So alignment wasn't something that they really paid close attention to on this particular model. The barrel has an extended groove pattern, which was part of Vader's armor as well. Uh, the barrel is straight until about this point where it tapers down to a thin groove, and then at the very end of the pen, it is flat. The cap twists off with two and a quarter rotations, and underneath we have what I feel is the highlight of this pen, uh, which is this very nice 18 karat gold nib. While the nib is stamped with the cross branding, it's actually a Sailor nib. Uh, Sailor makes some of uh, the most fantastic nibs, and uh, the one here for this Peerless 125 is no exception. It's really a pleasure to write with. Uh, it was available in either fine or medium, and here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a bit of a ridge and then angles up just slightly before straightening out. The section is metal, uh, but I feel that the lacquered exterior really dampens the slickness of this material and I have no issues maintaining a solid grip on this pen. The length of the pen is nice, and I feel it's well balanced in the hand. It has a nice balance of not being too heavy and not being too light. The cap does post, and it does post securely, but the cap is rather large and kind of bulbous. I feel it throws off that balance a bit and backweights the pen, so I prefer to use it unposted. This is a cartridge converter pen. It utilizes proprietary cross cartridges and a converter is included. With this pen being made of metal, eye dropping would not be advised. The Cross Peerless 125 Darth Vader originally retailed for around $450. Uh, it wasn't inexpensive, but uh, it is a high quality writing instrument with a very interesting theme. Um, I was able to pick this one up on clearance directly from Cross right after they announced they were losing their license and they were looking to clear out their stock. Uh, it was only $220, which is a great deal for this pen. They can still be found on the secondary market if you're so inclined to search. Standard Peerless 125s can be found in the $280 range. Uh, it's a pen I highly recommend. Uh, like I mentioned up front, I've always felt that this was really an underrated pen, mainly because it's such a great pen coming from a company which most pen aficionados don't think that much about. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample.
So here we go with some size comparisons for the Cross Peerless 125 Darth Vader. You know what? I wanted to give you another closer look at that. It's a little hard to see in pictures, uh, but the helmet is rather nice on here. It's just kind of a, a subtle feature. But in regard to the size comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with a standard uh, Peerless 125. They're the exact same size. Then here it is with a Lamy All-Star. And here it is with another Star Wars pen that was put out by Schaefer. Um, this one was called their Pop Collection. Uh, and this one was their R2-D2. Here it is with a Twisby VAC 700. And then in regard to a couple of pens that I'll be reviewing here in the near future, uh, here is a Leonardo Mosaico, and this is in the turquoise. And that's just a really nice turquoise material. Uh, and then finally, here is a brand new pen from Conklin, and this is the Mark Twain, and this is their Super Black. And you know, maybe with the lights, it uh, doesn't necessarily show it as well, but this is really black. This is probably the blackest pen that I've seen as far as like a matte black look. It's just really nice. Kind of has a, a nice, almost rubbery feel to the outside of it as well. It's interesting. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with that Leonardo Mosaico and the Lamy All-Star and the Twisby VAC 700. Here we go with the writing sample for the Cross Peerless. 125 Darth Vader This is a medium 18 karat gold nib and the ink I figured with Darth Vader it needed a red ink so one of my favorite red inks is Diamine Poppy Red This is what the ink looks like. It's a really nice, vibrant red. Uh, here it is with Diamine's Firestorm Red, which has a bit of uh, shimmer in it. And then here's one of my first red inks I bought, which is Thornton's Red. This is what Diamine's smaller 30 milliliter bottle looks like. The only issue with these is the neck is rather uh, small, and so there's a lot of pens that don't quite fit through that neck. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I really love Sailor Nibs. Now, Sailor Nibs aren't necessarily known for being, you know, basically glassy smooth. Um, you can get a little bit of flex out of here. I had a little bit of railroading there. But in regard to feedback, it's, you know, it's not going to be super smooth. There is going to be a little bit of feedback, but I really enjoy Sailor's feedback. Uh, in regard to some ink flow, it's decent on this pen. On reverse writing, it's just barely there. It uh, is a little bit on the scratchy side in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there you have the Cross Peerless 125 Darth Vader, uh, a pen that I felt appropriate to review on this day. Uh, but outside of that, uh, the Cross Peerless 125, like I had mentioned before, is a pen I feel is really underrated and one that you should consider adding your collection uh, because uh, I think it looks nice. And then the Sailor nib on it is outstanding as well. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.